right, so now we got our shape in place. Let's go and build out all the ramp geo. And this is basically going to be split up into two parts because if you look at a lot of ramps, they have this metal piece uh, called the transition down at the bottom of the ramp. And it's, you know, a good amount of space down at the bottom there. And so I need a way to split the curve that we've created with the shape into two parts. All right, so let's go into Houdini and get all this stuff built out. Okay, so let's get the geometry built out for the ramp here. And this is going to be split into two pieces. We're going to have the transition down here, and then we're going to have the ramp geometry. All right, so before we actually do that, let's go and uh, promote some parameters for here so we can actually control it from our HDA. So I'm just going to right-click on this guy right here and uh, open up my type properties window so I can start to populate the parameters here. All right, so a couple things I want control over. Uh, I want control over the radius in X. So I'm just holding down Alt and then middle mouse clicking over the label here. And that allows me to promote those. You can also, um, you know, highlight the number and click and drag it using the left click. All right. And I'm also going to get the, uh, I don't think I need the divisions, but we definitely want the arc angle for this guy right here. So I want to promote that guy. All right. So I'm just going to leave these guys named uh, up this way. And I want to actually clamp the range for the arc angle here. All right, so I'm going to clamp it between uh, zero, and actually zero would not make any sense. So let's do something like a uh, minimum angle of maybe 10. Yeah, and then the max angle is going to be 90 because anything over 90 for a quarter pipe would not be a quarter pipe. All right, so that's our max there, and our default is set to 90. Okay, so then channels here, this is how you set the default value that appears. All right, and I think these guys are fine. We definitely don't want any negative values, so let's select both these guys and just put these to zero and clamp that. And, you know, while I'm thinking about it, we probably don't want, ever want to go to 0 0.01. Or I mean point zero. all right? So we'll leave it at that, and then we'll leave this guy open here. So, all right, those guys are all set up. Good to go. Let's hit Apply and Accept. So now we have access to our uh, HDA parameters. If I hit U on the keyboard, I can come up here now, and I can start to affect the shape of this. All right, so I can, you know, affect the shape of my actual ramp to get different angles and different uh, radiuses, stuff like that. All right, cool. Let's dive back in. I'm going to double click this guy and let's focus on uh, getting this curve split into two pieces. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a um, object merge node. All right. So let's drop down an object merge node and I'm going to call this get shape. So I'm just going to rename it get shape. And the reason why I'm doing this, because I don't want to have a really long, and messy network that's all combined together. I'm going to split this out into separate systems, basically, or parts. Okay, it'll help you just stay focused and a little bit more uh, manageable when it comes to um, de defining your networks here inside of Houdini. All right, so what we want to do is we want to select this object merge node, and I want to just click and drag this out ramp shape null node into that object one. And then I'm going to turn off the uh, import transform because we don't need to import any transform information. All right, so this now. This node now actually has the shape in it. So if I put the display flag here, you can see we now have the geometry. So we just, you know, effectively sent the geometry from the null node over here. All right, it's a really cool way to work. All right, so let's go and get this guy split up here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, drop down a carve node. All right, so this carve node allows me to carve a curve. All right, you can see by default, um, we have this first use uh, parameter available to us. And if I move the slider, you can see this uh, point is actually carving the curve into, you know, a smaller section. All right. And it goes from zero to one, which is perfect. All right. So I'm going to use this to define, you know, the length of the transition for our ramp. All right. So what I want to do is I'm going to set this to something like 0.13. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to keep both the inside and the outside. And what this is going to do is actually going to produce, if we come over here to our uh, primitive number display, it's going to produce for us two primitives. Okay. So that's great because now what I can do is I can develop geometry for both the ramp and the transition geometry. So I'm going to drop down a split node. Okay. And I'm going to feed in the result of this carve into that split node. And with that, what I can do is I can come up here into the group and I can give one of those primitive numbers to this guy and it'll split on that number. So if I put in a zero for the group. You can see we're left with just the curve for the transition area. This is awesome. And you'll notice that the split is actually splitting out both pieces of geometry. Okay, so if I were to put down a null node here and then just use the alt left click and drag to create a copy of that null node, you can see now I have access 
to both those pieces of geometry. All right. So it's sending it out be two different outputs there. So there's our ramp curve and our transition curve. So we'll call this um, out transition curve like so. And let's just copy that and we'll paste it over here. Let me do that one more time. All right, there we go. So we'll call this out ramp curve. Awesome, cool. And I'm also gonna go and change the styling of my wires at this point. Um, I've been liking this style lately. So shift S on the keyboard allows you to change or cycle through the uh, wire designs. Okay, cool. So let's go and get the transition all figured out here. So the first thing I want to do, I need to get rid of all the points that are on the inside of this guy. So a great way to do that. I'm going to use a group by range node. So let's get our group uh, by range. There you are. Okay. So I'm going to feed the tr current curve into that and I'm going to set my group type to points and I'm going to call this uh, ends or actually let's call this inner uh, points. Yeah. So what I want to do is I just want to select all the points that are on the inside. And what's great about this group by range node is it allows us to define a start and end. So if I put the start up to one and the end up to one, you can see now we've grouped just those inner points. Perfect. Uh, what I can do now with that information or with that group, I can actually drop down a blast node. All right. So I just hit tab and start typing out blast. So I'm going to drop down a blast node and we are going to blast away all those inner points. And this just leaves me with a nice clean line which is great for our transition. Okay. So let's go and get this guy finished up. I'm going to go and drop down a sweep node here. All right. So let's drop down a sweep node and I'm going to, well, at least you'll notice by default, we're going to get this warning right here. So to get rid of that, we can actually utilize the built-in shapes. Now, uh, the reason why you're getting this warning is because currently it's asking for the second input cross section. So any sort of cross section that you give to this second input here, I'm not going to use that. I'm actually going to just set this to ribbon. And you'll notice that we're getting a nice clean shape here. So one thing I want to make sure that I do just to make sure that this uh, geometry is always facing upright is I'm going to come up to this construction tab here and then go to my up vectors and just make sure that my target up vector is set to the Y axis. All right. So this is always going to point in Y. Awesome. Cool. So let's make this a little bit bigger. All right. So this guy is going to be, uh, let's say that's three meters currently. And you know, that's, we're pretty good size. Uh, we'll leave it at that for now. We'll probably end up making it bigger. Now, I don't need all this extra geometry on the inside, at least not for now. Uh, so I'm just going to go and hide that or just set the columns to one. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to generate some UVs with this guy. All right. So I'm going to go to the UVs and attributes tab here inside of the sweep node. And I'm going to select the compute UVs. All right. So I'm going to hit save just to make sure I save my work. And then I'm going to hit five on the keyboard. And this is going to take me to my UV view. Now, by default, this particular uh, construction of the UVs is normalized uh, computed use, and it also has the length weighted. Uh, in this case, I want to actually get the real shape of the uh, 3D model in my UV view. So I'm going to turn off this normalized computed UV use, and I'm going to go into my UV seams uh, drop down here and turn off the snap to U and V. And now we get the real shape of our model in 3D space and in 2D space or UV space, I should say. All right. So now we need to create the thickness for this guy. All right. So let's go and uh, drop down a poly extrude node like so. Cool. And what I'm going to do for this, just drop, you know, the front uh, extrusion down to uh, the world zero. So to do that, I'm going to go to my transform extruded front and set the transform space to global and then just set the Y scale to zero. And look at that. We now have some depth to it. Uh, what we need to do is we need to actually output that back. And there we go. So now we have a solid shape. But you notice that we're getting this kind of, you know, really light or desaturated purple color. And that just means that our model's uh, reversed. If you actually hit D on the keyboard and you go to your optimize tab and then you turn on your remove back faces, you can see that our model is flipped currently. All right. So I'm going to leave that on for now. Uh, but that's what that shading means, that darker purple shading. Okay, so let's go and drop down a uh, reverse node. Awesome. And there we go. So now we've got our transition shape. Now we don't really need to have this bottom piece. So if we go to this poly extrude node, I'm going to not output the front and look at that. We now have 
a perfect piece of geometry that's great for our game. It's nice and optimized. And we've got all the UVs for it. So you notice that uh, in the UV view, uh, we've got this extra strip over here. So in the poly extrude node, if you come all the way down to the bottom, you'll notice that there's this texture coordinates option here. And it's generating the unwrapped texture coordinates for the sides. So it's helping us generate all those UVs. So we're good to go. All right, so we probably want to go and throw down a fuse node because there's points right on top of each other right there. Cool, so let's drop down a fuse node just to clean that up. And then finally, let's go and create a group node to group all this geometry just so we can access it later. So I'm going to call this uh, transition. Awesome. Well, it looks and that's looking pretty good. So let's actually give it some, you know, color. So I'm just going to kind of simulate that it's some sort of like aluminum or something like that. Make it a little bit brighter, desaturated. Yeah, something like that. Looks cool. All right, so let's go and drop down a null node. That's one of our first systems. So we're going to call this out uh, transition. Like so. Awesome. And then let's go and take care of our ramp geometry now. So let's go into our ramp. And it's going to be kind of the same process. So let's go first and create a sweep node. All right, this new sweep node in Houdini 18 is very powerful. It does a lot of work for us that we actually used to have to do manually uh, beforehand. So I'm going to drop down this sweep node, hook it into our ramp curve here, okay, and turn on the display flag for it. And then I'm going to set the uh, surface shape type to ribbon. Now you'll notice that it's not going to be oriented correctly. So we need to go to that construction tab and set the up vector to the Y axis. And that'll give us what we're looking for. All right, so at this point, this is where we should actually add a consistent width for our uh, ramp width because currently we're controlling it here and we're also controlling it here for the transition. So let's open up our uh, type properties window for our HDA. Okay, so I'm going to open that guy up. And what I'm going to do is just put in a separator just to separate the angle stuff from all the uh, width stuff here. And let's go and drag out this width value. So I just uh, click and drag on the width value and just pulled it over there. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and let's also uh, promote this columns. So I'm going to set this to something like three. And I think uh, uh, let's go in into the channels here and set that to three as well. So that's the default. All right. Yeah, I think that's going to work out well for us. So for the width, we definitely don't want to have anything smaller than 0.5 or half a meter. And we can make this, let's say, up to 10. So that's going to be our range for this guy. All right, so I also want to assign this particular value, this slider value, to this sweep node right here. So one way you could do that, all right, there's a lot of ways. We can come in here and just type out CH and then two quotation marks and dot dot forward slash. And then we could look for this internal name called width. All right, so let's start typing out width. There we go. And now it's connected. Well, at least we got a warning here. What is this saying? It says bad parameter reference. So let's actually type that out again. All right, so let's get this hooked up here. So forward slash, and I want width. And it doesn't look like it's actually there yet, but that's because I haven't hit apply. So let's hit apply. And that actually commits those parameters now. So we're gonna say uh, width, and there it is. And then end our quotation mark. So we need to do th the same thing for our column. So we'll say CH and two quotation marks, dot, dot, forward slash. And let's get our call S. So that's that guy right there. All right, and there we go. So now, apply and accept. When I control the width now from my HDA, it also controls that transition geometry. So perfect, and as well as the columns. All right, so now that we've got our ramp geometry all set up and ready to go, let's go and drop down a, a poly extrude node because I want to create that side geometry. All right, so we're going to go and do the same thing that we did for the transition geometry. I'm going to come over here to the uh, extrusion front transform and we're going to do the transform extruded front and I'm going to set the transform space to global. All right, so we just drop in global space or world space here. So I'm going to do a scale of zero and Y and look at that. We now have geometry for our ramp. All right, so let's go and output the back. Uh, we don't need the front. All right. And then what we need to do is we need to reverse all that geometry, just like we did for the transition. And that gives us our ramp geometry. How cool is that? So I also don't need this uh, geometry on the back here. So one way we could get rid of that is to drop down a group node. 
All right. And we're going to look for all faces that are basically pointing in negative Z. Okay. So I'm going to call this uh, backs like so. I'm going to turn off the base group. I'm going to keep the group type on primitives there. And we're going to do keep by normals. In this case, I want to test to see if you're pointing in negative 1. So I put negative 1 in for Z right here. And then I just set the spread angle down to 0. And that finds exactly those. So now we can use a blast node. So I'm going to drop down a blast node here. Like so. And we're going to blast away all the back geometry. That leaves me with the, exactly the geometry that I want left. Okay, so let's give this uh, uh, some UVs as well. So let me hit save on the keyboard. Good practice to get into. So we're going to come back to our sweep node for our ramp geometry. We're going to go to UVs and attributes and compute the UVs. And we're going to turn off normalized computed use and also turn off our snapping. All right, so I'm going to hit save again and hit five on the keyboard. And you can see now we have geometry. Uh, for our ramp. But what we need to do is you actually need to clean this up a little bit. All right. So if I were to use the uh, UV visualize node currently, so UV visualize, it's a side effects labs uh, tool. All right. So we're going to go and look at this. You can see that our UVs are all stretched and that's not going to be good for us. All right. So uh, what I want to do, I'm going to actually set this down to something like two just so we can see it a little bit better. So what I want to do is inside of my poly extrude node, I'm going to go and output the side group. So we're going to check on this, uh, not the back, we're going to do the side. Let's do the side here. And now that I've got that, what I can do is I can drop down an un UV unwrap node. All right, so we're going to do UV unwrap. And I'm going to drop that down like so. Turn on the display flag for that guy. And we're going to do the group of uh, extrude side. All right, so you'll notice if I hit five on the keyboard again, to go back to my UV view, uh, you can see that we've got the just the sides nicely UV mapped. All right. So now, if I were to take a look at my UV visualize node, we've got you know beautiful UVs. And we'll take care of all the the texel density stuff here in a little bit. But that's what I'm looking for at this point. It's just nice and clean UVs for the sides. All right, cool. So with that, uh, we're good to go. Let's go and create a group node, and I'm going to call this uh, ramp. All right. So this is the ramp geometry. And let's give it some color as well. So let's create a new color node here. And we're going to give this color that's kind of like a wood color. All right. But a little bit brighter. Usually this type of wood is a little bit brighter. It's got a very distinctive look to it. All right. That looks pretty good. I'm going to turn off all my point display. Well, actually leave the point display on. But I'm going to turn off all the point numbers and the primitive numbers there. Cool. So we're good to go. We've got our UVs. We've got our group set up. We've got our colors set up. I'm going to create or I'm going to duplicate this. Uh, null node by holding down alt and left clicking and dragging all right and then let's go and rename it so this is going to be called out ramp like so and we now have our transition so if i hold down control and then click this little uh, pink flag here we can see both geometries at the same time all right so we're on our way to creating our skate ramp all right so i'm going to close out the lecture there and in the next lecture we're going to go and uh, build out the coping i think is the next step thanks so much